Hello everybody, welcome to this guide and tutorial for the max club card trading that is new in the Golf Clash game. I do already get tons of questions from players wondering how everything works and I'm going to try to cover every inch of it in this video by going over all from how it works to uh, like uh, some ideas on like mindset of thinking when you're choosing the club that you're going to get extra cards from and also giving you advice on which clubs that I don't feel you should be used or like feel you should be choosing cards for in like ever. Also in the end I'm going to open my prism chest and going to get to make a selection there. Also going to cover what happens when you max out all the club again. Because yeah, that's going to happen sooner or later. So hope you're going to enjoy the video. Make sure that you hit thumbs up. Uh, also make a comment in the comment section below if you do have any questions. So everyone, let's start by going over how it works. And just to make it very clear, this, uh, this information is taken from Reddit from Mang Dynasty which has compiled these text uh, notes here, which is um, very good and awesome to follow. And, you know, it is very important to understand how this works because you can definitely use this one in a very good way. But I think also uh, being comfortable with, uh, with how it works makes you be able to look at it in the, in a good, in the good way as it is. So first, just below uh, the three daily cards, the club card shop, contains a new button, maxed club cards. If you don't see this in your shop, force update the app. So when you click on the shop box, you will then be able to see everything on that side. And if you don't see that, you may uh, force close the app. Uh, it could be that you have an iOS device and you haven't updated to the latest, um, latest version of Golf Clash, then you need to do that as well. It resets every day at exactly the same time the daily club card shop refreshes. So, yeah, just simple. The game automatically chooses the club that has the most excess clubs. Example, runner 6497 will automatically be picked instead of a sniper 4712 or rough cutter 703. So you don't pick yourself which club cards you want to trade out the game does that for you uh, then you pay 300 cards if the chosen card was a blue slash common or 30 cards for a yellow slash rare or three cards for a purple slash epic and that is also something that um, um, the, um, uh, that is something that you choose yourself as, uh, as I want to say I'm gonna show you that one later as well so you get three choices and then you're going to be able to pick there yourself. Um, the game then opens a prism chest that offers you a choice of three different clubs. These clubs uh, are first and foremost already unlocked. So you don't, it's never going to be anything that you have not, uh, like let's say you have not um, unlocked Apocalypse, you will not get that card in the prism. Not already max upgrade and make sure you've upgraded your clubs to max if possible. And I'm gonna get into that as well. And what that means is like, let's say you have collected cards for maybe we we'll say the Sand Lizard, which is a, cl a club that we might not use that often. Then it's very important that you do upgrade it to max because otherwise you will still be able to get cards for that club because the game will not recognize that you technically have it maxed. So you need to max that up. That is very important. A lot of players um, don't know that, but it's very important that you do upgrade to max. And otherwise, it's going to be for those clubs that you have not maxed out, you will get uh, cards for that. You cannot get cards for any club that you have maxed out already. It tries to offer offers you one blue, one yellow, one purple. But if all your blues are maxed, it will instead give you two yellows and one purple. And if all your blues and yellows are maxed, it offers three purples. So if you have all the blue cards, as it says, maxed out, you will never be offered that one in the prism. You will then get first and foremost two yellows, then one purple. And if those, uh, if the yellows also, the rare clubs are. Uh, maxed out then you will get three uh, purples and um, then you maybe wonder what happens uh, if you do have 
three all the purples maxed out then you will actually get to choose between three different premium balls so it's going to be the same as as the club cards but you will be uh, getting offered premium balls instead i'm going to show you that later as well if you choose a blue club you get 300 cards if you choose a yellow you get 30 and if you choose a purple you get three cards if it can't offer you three different purples it it uh, if offers as many different purples as possible and the rest will be a selection of premium balls quantity three examples in included voyager gear and shell ball and there you have what i just recently talked about the likelihood of being offered a specific card given that the rarities are already chosen appears to be completely random with equal probability and completely unrestricted by trophy count meaning you should see the apocalypse offer at least five percent of the time as there are 20 purple clubs as long as you've already unlocked the apocalypse so uh, yeah if you didn't follow that it basically tells you that you know it doesn't really matter if you have zero trophies or maxed out trophies you will still be offered all types of clubs that you do have unlocked and you haven't maxed out but once again you need to have unlocked the club to be able to get it in the prism if you open the prism yes but do not select your reward by closing the app those three choices will remain until you finish the selecting and waiting until the next day will still be press still present or present the same choices and you will have wasted one day's possibility of trade-ins just choose your best option every day that is something i've been getting a lot of questions about like what if i'm not happy with the offers that i'm getting from the game select anyway take the club that you know that you uh, yeah that that you want or you just pick one and don't really care about it because otherwise that's gonna follow you all the time sometimes you're gonna be lucky sometimes you're not gonna be lucky that's just how it works uh, but you cannot uh, choose the club that you want to get the cards from because if that's gonna happen then uh, it's it's not going to be a system that is going to work so when it comes to uh, what club like clubs should I choose from the prism chest here is some like tips for that and I think it is a very very important stuff to actually read through and also uh, actually have in mind when you're going to pick in order of priority from highest to lowest immediate bag improvements if you choose a club you always use that is close to upgrade example nirvana will soon get to level nine choose a club you will is use once it's upgraded and it's close to upgrade example grizzly is almost eight so basically like just logic if it's a club that you are playing with then it's better to get cards for that club than a club that you are never going to use so therefore there is obviously specific clubs that is not as good so sometimes it could be better for you to choose a common club or you can choose a uh, like a rare club instead of choosing an epic let's say you have a castaway as an epic which is a club that you will never use then you maybe choose the 30 goliath cards instead or you choose 300 sniper cards which is going to be better because you are going to use that club more often than you're going to use the castaway long term bag improvement choose a club you use that is not close to upgrade example rapier still needs 500 cards choose a club you will eventually use once it's upgraded but it's not close to upgrade example falcon is level five that is also something you decide obviously in the end what you're gonna do but pick uh, pick the clubs that you are supposedly going to use and uh, the clubs that you are using at the moment just once again logic because we do want to upgrade those clubs that we're using and we don't want to upgrade the other ones and in the end if you have any question what clubs are more valuable than not then you can always ask and i will be providing club guides for each uh, type of club uh, to be able to provide and just basically tell you this 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 you know don't care about that one normal plan maxing out clubs so you can stop seeing them offered improving future selections choose a club you will never use but it's close to max out apache 8 has 9 on card once it max out it will never be offered again choose a club you will never use and it's not close to maxing out example crap i got uh, castaway cards so in the end here we can turn it around from the negativity that we have let's say that i would be getting caster cards in one of my chests and i would be super disappointing now at least or like in in my prism you know i would be super disappointed at first but then at the same time once we get that freaking club maxed out we would never get offered that again it's not as the chest works that you will be getting cards for every club even though it's maxed the prism doesn't work like that so sometimes it could be better to make a decision 
and to upgrade a club or get uh, cards for a club that you just want to get rid of that you never got offered that one again and then obviously there's going to be uh, a better percentage of getting a club that you do want alternative long-term plan optimize how quickly our clubs get max and minimize receiving more max club cards choose the club that is the first from being max will essentially always be a purple club yeah i think that's maybe a little bit too much to complicate it but it should be good to uh, to be seen there to be read and i think these type of things is very very valuable once again to read through to understand and that is something i will connect to club guides later on so you actually know what clubs you should actually be choosing and should not be so to just give you some quick uh, information about about what clubs that you should not be focusing on upgrading if you do get that as an option and we're going to scroll down we're going to start with the drivers and the drivers uh, when it comes to getting an option to choose between it's the rocket then the big topper the uh, the uh, the quarterback and um, it would be those three clubs that I would actually stay away from trying to upgrade when it comes to drivers, at least as a starting point. Obviously, if you do get some crap cards in, like you do get three options like that, you get all those three as options, sure, you can't do much about it, but otherwise I would focus on getting another club. If so, it would be like a wood club or something like that. Wood clubs, Horizon, Viper, Big Dog would be those three that I would stay away from trying to um, to take card from, at least as a start. Based on, you know, the, obviously you can use that in a lower level, but in a lower level you do not have maxed out club cards that uh, often come up in a higher level, and then you're using the Hammerhead, the Guardian, the Sniper, and the Cataclysm instead. Long Irons is interesting. The Grim Reaper, and I also want us to stay, stay away from the Tsunami, and then last but not least, I would actually stay away from uh, from upgrading the Saturn. And the reason for that is that the Saturn wouldn't be very valuable until on a higher level. It is a common club which will get you more uh, card for that in the end. The Grim Reaper is totally crap. Tsunami is a lovely club in maxed out, but in the end you have a very bad ball guideline for being a long iron. It's very rarely you're going to use a club like the Tsunami in tour play or in tournament play. So therefore we're not gonna focus on those clubs. Short irons, the Apache, the Runner, the Claw are three of them that I don't want you to focus on. The reason Apache is, once again, it's crap. The Runner, sure, you have a decent amount of top spin, but not much else than that. The Claw, it's also the same thing. It's kind of like a in-between club, but it does have a very bo bad ball guideline. And when we play with short irons, we want to have a, bo a ball guideline. And therefore, Kingfisher, the Thorn, the Hornet, and the Falcon, and especially the Kingfisher, is very interesting. You can see, in, in obviously, in a high level, but this club is going to get a very good ball guideline. So it could be worth, in a long-term investment here, to actually give the Kingfisher some cards if you do get that as an option. Otherwise, the Thorn, the Hornet, the Falcon uh, are the three clubs that you're going to most likely use. Wedge, then we have the Dart, we have the Firefly, the Boomerang, the Downing One, the Skewer. All those fives, I would not take cards for those. Because you are going to use either the, uh, the Rapier or you're going to use the Endbringer. So stay away from using or like to picking for the other clubs there. Because I do think in the end those will not be valuable for you. I think it's just going to be a waste of cards to get them. Rough Irons, the Rough Cutter, Junglist, Machete, Racer, and the Amazon. Everything except for the Nirvana and the Off-Roader would be clubs that I would... Um, the the Off-Roader and Nirvana, if I turn it around, would be the only clubs that I would try to get cards from. Because in the end, the other clubs will not match and get you anything. For a Rough Iron, we need Ball Guideline, we want to have Distance. And I think, especially the Ball Guideline is very valuable with the 4.5 Ball Guideline of the Nirvana and the Off-Roader with the 4.5 Ball Guideline as well. Looking at Amazon, once again, it's basically like the Tsunami. It gives you a lot, but it has a crap Ball Guideline. So the Amazon will not be good if you're close to the green. It will be good if you're going to have a situation where you want to save yourself from Distance. Therefore, I don't want us to focus on the Amazon at all. Sandwich, Castaway, Desert Storm, 
uh, and then we are going to have the sand lizard uh, is going to be the three clubs that I don't want you to focus on. I think there is value in both the Malibu, the Sahara, the Houdini and the Spitfire. The Malibu because it's often a pretty easy club to upgrade in the start. Gives you 4.5 ball guideline and as you hear I value ball guideline. The Sahara becomes a very good club in the end. Might be a long term investment thing. So maybe not the first choice if you get to choose between the Sahara and the uh, Malibu. Houdini, in my opinion, gets to become one of the best uh, sandwich, if not the best. Because in the end, you're going to get a good accuracy. You have a 4.7 ball guideline. And everyone that has played with a sandwich before knows that playing with a, a good ball guideline is very valuable. And obviously, as you can see here, the Spitfire is absolutely a beast. And for sure is something that I do think you should be playing with as well. So in the end, here you have some selections here of, or at least some, um, uh, some input from my end, which clubs you shouldn't be using. For those that maybe wonder like, okay, if you get maxed out club cards, as I men mentioned before, like you have all the clubs maxed out, then you're going to be able to select and pick uh, between three different type of premium balls. In this example here, as you can see, you have the gear ball, you have the shell ball and the Voyager ball. All those three you cannot buy from the shop. And that is the case. These balls are going to be offered here. You cannot buy in the shop and you can get three of them. So in the end, you choose the gear ball, get three of them. Otherwise, Voyager ball, three balls and then shell ball, three balls. So if you maxed out all your clubs, you're going to get every single day a chance to pick from three, uh, three free premium balls. So let's go over and um, take a look on how everything works. Then, so we're going to go into the shop. You see here on the bottom. Uh, we press there, there you can see the prism, you know, if we check there, you know, surplus card from max clubs can be traded into activate a prism chest. Trading requires either, you see, 300 common, 30 rare or 3 epic. And in the end, when I press trading now, it's going to choose the club that I have the most extra cards from, which is the sand laser. So we're going to trade in that. And now as I have all blue clubs, I have all rare clubs uh, already maxed out. I'm only going to get to choose between epic clubs. You see, I get the hammerhead, I get the horizon, I get the green reaper. And now I need to make a decision which one do I want to get. And in this case, I'm going to choose the hammerhead. And then I get three cards for that club and then it's done. And as you can see here again, Daily Prism chest open, come back in 12 hours, 50 minutes, exactly when it turns around in the shop. So in the end here, this is what, that's the only thing you do when it comes to uh, accessing the Prism and getting to trade out. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. That's just how it works. But now you have seen everything here for this video, how everything works when you open chest. Also got some information that could be very valuable for you, all from what type of club type. You should be focusing on uh, getting extra cards from and also when it comes to um, the fact that you know the the, the mindset of picking uh, or doing the right decision when it comes to selecting your choices so thank you so much for watching make sure that you comment in the comment section below if you do have any questions and i will be happy to help you out